Cox here, guys. Uh, thanks for joining me again. You can see this big empty room here. Obviously, I'm getting ready to do something. Going to remove the carpet. Now, this is going to get a uh, engineered hardwood flooring and get ready to make the video for that here. You know, obviously here in just a few days. Uh, but we got to get rid of the carpet first. Now, some people are like, "Well, that's easy," but I know there's a lot of people that really don't know how to do it, um, or there's a good couple tricks to doing it to make it a lot easier to handle for yourself. Okay. Um, now you might notice the baseboards have already been removed. I didn't have my cabin with me yesterday. Um, really, I'm just going to give you two quick tips on removing baseboard. One, take your utility knife and cut at the top of the baseboard to make sure there's no paint attaching it to the wall. So when you pull it off, it doesn't tear, tear the wall. Okay, we don't like that. Um, and number two is they make small trim uh, crowbars. Okay, they're much thinner and smaller, which is... Um, it's just a lot better for the trim. It's just gonna keep you from denting the wall as much and breaking the trim up um, so easily, okay? Other than using your standard, you know, full-size flat bars uh, or other pry bars, which is really made for removing dimensional lumber, okay? Not for trim, okay? So use the right crowbar. Other than that, here we go. All right, a couple things we're gonna want today is I do have a dust mask. Um, you probably wonder why. Well, an old carpet has a lot of allergens pet danders and this and that, and when I pull it up, it's going to be puffing everywhere. So really, this is actually going to help a lot, okay? I already started to get a sneeze attack yesterday from hitting the baseboard up, okay? Um, it just happens with pets. I'm going to do some gloves here. Um, it just helps out. we got tack strip that's going to be underneath this. We don't want to get stuck by only old rusty nails. So i got some leather gloves, some duct tape. Uh, this will be binding it up later. Um, I'm planning on making this into tight rolls rather than trying to pull it out in big old sheets. They might see professionals do that, but generally professionals, they're always in teams of at least two, and they got a big flat trailer out there. I don't have a big flat bed trailer, so I'm gonna make tight rolls so I can take this out by myself to my truck, okay? All right, and then safety glasses and utility knife. And that should really be about all we need for the first part of removing the carpet, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark off, I'm gonna go about every four foot. You know, you might think, well, I'm going to go wider because I don't want to make a tons of them. They're going to get heavy, okay? Now, maybe you got a friend that can help you pull them out. If you do, you know, you got someone there, go ahead and make them a little bit longer, six, eight feet. But I'm going with four foot rows, okay? And, um, well, shoot, let's just get started. Okay, now I've made sure that it's cut all the way through. My blade did dull a little bit and I didn't really get, you know, on one side of that strip there. It kind of had a couple areas there. So anyways, recut that, make sure it's loose. And now we're just going to roll it up, okay? Just going to roll it up. Okay, and this part is what the duct tape is for. Now that we have our tight roll of carpet over here, we gotta keep it tight. You don't want it unrolling there before you uh, get it off to the transfer station and dump wherever you guys are taking it. But don't be too cheap on your duct tape here. So I'm gonna make two rows of duct tape to hold this together. There we go. We got our breakfast burrito of carpet, if you will. That's kind of dirty. That's not a very good breakfast burrito. All right, and if that's going to be too heavy for some of y'all to carry by yourself, you see this was a very long room, then cut the row in half and don't make it so fat. But now I got some manageable rolls I'm putting in the garage to store. Um, that way they don't get wet. When I get this all hauled off or wrapped up, then I can haul it off all together. Okay, so we'll catch back up here because after I get this cleaned up, there's two more things we have to do. You see here, I got stopped a few places here with the padding. There's staples I have to address. We gotta get, take care of those, get those cleaned up. This is a wood subfloor here. 
So there are staples. If this was a concrete slab, um, then there would be glue, okay? So that has to be addressed where the padding was either stapled or glued down. And then we have the tack strip all the way around the edges. Because we are not going back with carpet, tack strip has to be removed. Now, if we were going back with carpet and just want to do this part ourselves, then, you know, leave the tack strip alone. Still have to address the staples. It looks like big old Dexter back there wants to come help. But, um, anyways, let's catch up to the next part here. Alright guys, now I've got all the carpet rolled up and sitting in the garage ready to be hauled off, okay? Um, so I hope that tip of rolling it up real tight like that, wrapped it with the duct tape helped. But we got to finish prepping this. Uh, this is, I mean, the easy part is actually the carpet itself and the pad, okay? Then you have left over all the, uh, the pad here with all the staples and the tack strip. And um, we are going to be replacing this carpet with a wood floor, so we don't want a tack strip there. Now, if we're going to place it with a new carpet, just get rid of this, leave that, okay? Oh, if you're curious about this cool uh, rolling bench I've got, yeah, take a look at the top right of your screen there. And i got a video there showing you guys how you can make one of your own. All right. It's not perfect, but it sure does help out the back and knees right about now. So right now, unfortunately, you see pry bars and hammer. I mentioned before about trim pry bars. Here's a couple of trim pry bars versus the traditional big flat bar. Okay. Here's a small piece of tack strip here, It'll be easy to take out. Just get underneath it. They're nailed down. Tack strip, glasses is always good. Safety glasses, leather gloves, also very important. Don't want to be grabbing these tacks. You just gotta keep working it up. All right. Obviously, a good pair of leather gloves. You can see there is a must. All right. Now this is a small piece that was easy. Um, if you have a construction grade, like a um, trash bag, that's good. Putting this in regular trash bags, they'll rip right through it, obviously, all tacks. Now, if you have long strips, it's okay to break this. But again, make sure you have glasses and gloves, because it does sometimes shatter. But it's not that hard if you have the tacks going away from you, okay? Um, you could just snap it like that, make smaller pieces. It's easier to get in the trash bag like that. Um, just be careful when you do that, okay, obviously. All right, now that's all there is to the tack strip. That's actually pretty easy. It's just a little tedious going around and getting it all up. It's these staples now, which can be a pain in the butt. So we gotta get rid of them. A lot of times, that's what it takes, is taking a, uh, like a scraper or a pry bar and just knock them out. Now, if you do get all the padding out, okay, you get all the padding out, but the staples are still there. Um, you can hammer back in if it's going to go back in and, and go down and, and stay snug. Okay, they don't have to necessarily all be completely removed, but it has to be smooth. Okay, we got to get rid of them staples sticking up. Now, if your padding is not stapled down, if it is uh, glued down, okay, if it's glued down, then you need a flooring scraper, something like this. Okay, it's real basic metal pole, big metal blade here. Um, it's not sharp. But it's good for scraping stuff off the floor. That's why it's called a flooring scraper. You get this at the flooring department at just about any store. Um, and then you're just going to scrape across the concrete and get rid of that padding. Okay, and also sometimes, let's see if we can cooperate with this here. Sometimes it doesn't cooperate that well. But you can see there, I'm going to be using this and uh, popping up a lot of staples using this. So even if it's stable, a flooring scraper might be your, a great choice. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and uh, check out the rest of the stuff. Thanks again.